Good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Monica Hook. I am the campus counselor on the Northeast campus. And tonight we have with us a representative from Glendale Community College, Hannah. She will be um, helping us out tonight. Uh, before we get into the meat of everything, it looks like most of you have already done this, but um, if anyone has not, or if you're just jumping on, if you could go ahead and in the chat box, type in the student's first name, last initial, the Westmet campus that the student attends, and the program the student attends. Um, we're just trying to kind of keep track of everybody who attends these information sessions. So thank you for doing that. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, in an effort to make sure we have the best quality for all participants, um, we do ask that you mute yourself, uh, that you turn off your video, because that tends to take up a lot of bandwidth and it just uh, seems to improve the quality of all videos are off. Um, if you have a question, please go ahead and type it into the chat box. I will be monitoring the chat box when Hannah is speaking, um, and we'll make sure that we get all your questions answered before we leave tonight. And that is it. So the purpose of this information session is really just to give an overview of what dual enrollment is um, and what the process is to take advantage of dual enrollment. So we will go ahead and get started by watching this video. get you excited I don't know what will that's a pretty cool video and it kind of just sums it up uh, nice and, and neatly the, the benefits of dual enrollment so now we'll get into more specifics um, and how your students can take advantage so uh, again I'd like to welcome uh, Hannah from Glendale Community College she's going to talk about the dual enrollment registration process um, and just to make sure everybody's in the right place. Uh, the programs that we offer do a moment through GCC are uh, automotive technology, which is at the Northeast and Northwest campus right now, um, and IT security. So Hannah, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Monica. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen really quickly so that, that way I can share my um, presentation. Hold on just a moment. I am so glad that Monica showed that video because obviously it's very energetic. And when I think of dual enrollment, I think of the energy that it does bring to your future goals. So I hope that I can highlight some of that tonight. As Monica said, my name is Hannah and I worked for Maricopa Community College District now for about five years. I've worked in post-secondary education for 17 years total both at um, ASU, U of A, and with Maricopa Community College District. So I do have um, sometimes a lot of things that I like to share, but I'll try to only give you what you need tonight. And then if you have questions, we can always address those um, later on or at the end of this session. So a little bit about dual enrollment. Some benefits are, um, they kind of all encompass the fact that you're doing high school coursework and you're doing college credit at the same time. So you're getting that credit simultaneously. So you're earning those college credits, which means that you're going to have a college transcript while at the same time meeting those 
necessary credits for your high school or for West Mech in this case. The reason this can happen is because the teachers are certified to teach at the college level. So technically you have a college instructor at West Mech because of the fact that they have the certification necessary in order to teach at the, that college level. A lot of things change in our world, but one thing hasn't changed. Courses that are 100 level or above are transferable. And so all of the courses within dual enrollment that are offered are transferable courses. With that being said, some of them may be transferable, transferable as an elective. Some of them count towards general ed. Some of them count towards your associate's degree, which happens to be the case for a lot of the classes um, with West Met. So again, you're completing that WestMet coursework, but you're earning the college credit. When you are a dual enrollment student, you have access to the same services as all college students have. That's because you are a college student. Even though you're not physically at the college, you've still signed up for that college credit. And so you're getting those same services. And those are things such as advising, on-campus tutoring, online tutoring, the fitness center that has options for you, um, as well as the library. We also have computer labs that you have access to. So there are lots of benefits to being a dual enrollment student other than just the college credit. So you also have a lot of those same accesses as a regular um, college student. As far as pathways, I know I briefly mentioned transferability. So there are lots of pathways that you can take. With WestMEC, I noticed that a lot of you are doing IT security, you're doing automotive. We have those degree programs. We have those associates programs. And so there are opportunities for you to take the classes that you're earning in dual enrollment and apply those towards associate degrees that you can have um, if not nearly complete by the end, some students will take classes even in the summer to um, supplement their dual enrollment and then some of them end up with their associate's degree by the time they graduate from high school. So those are opportunities that you want to look into. Um, I've listed a link here with a, it shows the degrees and certificates that you can explore. There is also an opportunity that I would look at on our dual enrollment website, which you will be receiving that information. When you go to our site, we have a fast track to college packet that's designed for each school that offers dual enrollment. And so when you go to participating high schools on our website and you look at West Mech and you scroll over to the right, you'll see a fast track packet. What that does is that lists all of the courses that are offered with WestMEC, the ones that you can take, and then it also lists what type of degree those credits count towards, or if they count towards a general ed requirement, it'll, it'll tell you that. If it counts as an elective, it will tell you that as well. So that is something to look at. It also will let you know which universities within the state of Arizona those classes will transfer directly into a bachelor's degree program for. So that is something to definitely explore and keep in mind. And my computer is thinking. Let's see if I can get back to my screen. It looks like we've lost our screen here. Okay, so cost of dual enrollment is always a big question. So the cost of dual enrollment is the same as it is for a regular college student because it is a college class and you're signing up for that regular college class. So it's $85 per credit hour and then there's a $15 registration fee. Some classes are one credit, some classes are three credits, some classes are five credits. It really depends on the course. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at the class listing. There are some options for financial aid for dual enrollment students, so we're going to get into that. There's something called the Maricopa Grant. That is what is available for the dual enrollment students um, with Maricopa in particular. They, it used to be a paper process where you, could, you would apply via a paper application through our office. It is now an electronic process. Um, 
part of that is because of COVID-19, but the other part is because it just really streamlines the process and makes it a quicker turnaround for students. I put the link here, but you can also view that link on our website. We have it linked there. And so you would go directly online, submit everything electronically through our financial aid office, and they process that and they are in communication with you. The way the Maricopa grant works is it will cover, it'll cover at least one class. It will not cover more than the six to nine credits typically. So that's something to keep in mind, depending on how many credits you're signing up for, you wanna make sure that it falls within the parameters of what the Maricopa grant offers if that's what you're looking for. So that, again, just things to keep in mind when you're looking at the process. As far as registration goes, so registration is the process of actually adding the class to your schedule. So just because you're in the class at West Mech and you say, hey, pick me, I wanna do dual enrollment, doesn't mean you're in the dual enrollment class at the college. So you, have to, you do have to go through the steps of becoming registered for the class at the college. That involves applying for admissions, which should be a very simple process as long as you follow step-by-step -step via the website. Make sure the class that you're taking doesn't require a prerequed testing because if it does, you need to make sure that, that that's all done and out of the way so you can add the class. And I'll get into a little bit more of that in a moment. Step three and four is submitting the registration form. Now this, for some of you who are returning to dual enrollment, um, you may have remembered everything was paper before. It is now an electronic process. So you do submit the registration form online. That final step five is payment. If you receive the Maricopa grant, you don't need to worry about payment. If you don't, then you need to make sure that a payment plan is set up or full payment is in the system. Now, two things that they did not add to my uh, presentation are deadlines. The registration deadline is September 18th. The payment deadline is September 25th. So those are two dates that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. The Maricopa grant deadline, if you decide you wanna apply for the Maricopa grant, the priority deadline is the 28th of this month. So that's this Friday. So August 28th is priority deadline. The final deadline is not until September 4th. So you have a little bit of time to get things situated before that Maricopa grant final deadline. The process for registration is listed here at this link. It is on our website. And I would like to show you kind of how that looks, which I think that I um, should have access to do in a moment. I um, wanna just go over this really quick. In order for your college transcript to be successful, for you to have that college credit once you've signed up for dual, you do need to earn a C or better in the class. If you do not, that could affect your financial aid in the future. So you wanna make sure you earn a C or better in the class. Then once you complete the class or the classes, depending on how many you're registering for, you will have a transcript that will show those college credits. Your transcript, again, online process, you order that via your student center once you have that all set up, or you can download a My Info app and you can order your transcript from there as well. And you, you can order an unofficial or an official, so whichever one you need at the time, you're able to do that um, all online. This is our contact info. You can always reach us by phone. We are more than happy to talk to you on the phone. We now have a new feature to chat online. So we have a nice little electronic lobby that you can enter and we will be happy to help you there. The alternative option is email. Just right now, because we're in peak time, please allow 24 to 48 hours for a response via email because we are inundated with emails right now, but we're always happy to help. So please feel free to reach out to us um, via any of those methods of, of contact. And I just wanna show one more thing. So when you go to our website, 
this is our web page. The place that you would see those steps is you would click register for dual enrollment. And then you'll see the step one, which is getting admitted. Step two, Hannah, step three. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, but we're not okay. seeing we're not seeing that screen. We're just You're not? Your, no, we're still seeing your presentation. Okay, let me go. Let me see if I can. You have to stop sharing the first one and then share the next yeah. one. Okay. I'm sorry, hold on a moment. It is giving me. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so when you go to our website, let me take you back to the home page so that you can see what it looks like. This is the main web page. When you click on register for dual enrollment, this is where you will see the steps. So step one through five. So this, I just wanted to kind of give you a visual of what it looks like for later on. Um, so that as you're browsing and you come across it, you will know, oh, this is where I'm supposed to go. You'll see over here, this is the chat with us option. So if you're ever in a pinch and you have a question, you can always click on chat with us and we're in that lobby Monday through Friday from eight to 4.30. So that would be great if you end up having questions. Awesome, thank you, Hannah. So we got a couple of questions. Is the Maricopa grant the same as the grant information that we received today? If not, can they stack them or are they eligible for both? Um, so I'm not sure, uh, Mrs. Guy, did you present grant information today? Uh, yes, yeah, so I sent it out to all of my um, teachers and I put it on my Google Classroom. So the way that I run the Maricopa grant, well, the way that it ran last year with the West Met grant um, depends on how many credits they register for. So if they register for four credits and Glendale only ends up paying for three of them, um, then they would not qualify for the West Met grant. But some of our programs um, have like nine to 15 credits for semester. So if they get the Glendale and it covers one class, three credits or four credits, then they could be eligible for those remaining credits on the WestMet grant. Perfect, thank you. And then uh, how do I know how many credit hours my program has? So um, all of that information is going to be on, you can find it in multiple places. You can find it where Hannah just showed you on the dual enrollment website. Um, by going to participating high schools and then scrolling down to West Mech and which campus and you can see all of the courses that uh, are offered for dual enrollment. Um, you can also go to your counselor's Google Classroom because um, all that information is on there as well. Then we have, if you were in dual enrollment program last year, do you need to reapply? You do not need to reapply for as um, for like your MEID, that, that first step. Uh, but if you're talking about reapplying for the, Mar or if you're talking about the Maricopa grant, yes, you would need to reapply for that. Um, oh, thank you, Mr. Shoemaker for responding to Noah. Uh, if you're enrolled in Rio Salado College already, and the credits from West Met dual enrollment count towards the degree. So that is a great question. It would depend on what degree uh, pathway you're, you're trying to earn or you're following. Uh, so they're, they're transferable credits, but like Hannah said, they may transfer as electives or they may transfer um, differently based on what degree pathway it, you're looking at. So there's a couple ways you can check that. Hannah, what would you suggest would be the best thing for them to do? To see if so the way, okay, so the way I'm reading it is that they're, you're enrolled in Rio Salado College already. So yeah, that would be something that I would meet with the Rio Salado advisor since you're in a program there already and then check with them to see how those credits will roll over into the degree program. 
Perfect, thank you. Um, if you don't qualify for either the Maricopa or the WestMet grant, there are no scholarships that I'm aware of for dual enrollment. So those are really the two sources for financial assistance is that Maricopa grant or WestMet grant. So um, if, if you don't qualify for either of those, I would suggest setting up a payment plan and you can do that online uh, through GCC. Okay. Again, and the, the payment plan, sorry, the payment no, plan has to be, you have to apply for that by Friday, correct? The same as the grant deadline? No, it's just that the farther in advance you set it up, the more payments you make. So it's split into smaller amounts. If you do it later, then you don't have as long to pay it. So the amounts are larger. Thank you for that clarification. Uh -huh. It was a different answer on a different night. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no. um, again, if you want to see what classes are available for your student and their program, um, you can go to the GCC dual enrollment website and click on participating high schools and then scroll down, scroll down to West Mech and uh, the campus that your student attends and it'll be there. Or you can go to your counselor campus counselors Google Classroom. It's listed there as well. Uh, again, if you are already registered, like you took dual enrollment last year, say, uh, through GCC, you have already done, you've already applied for admission, you've gotten your MEID, you're just going to do that registration and payment step. So you're, you're a couple steps ahead because you already did those steps last year. So you do still have to register for this semester and pay the tuition for this semester, but you're going to use your MEID from last year and all of that. If you don't have your MEID, you can look it up um, on the website, the uh, Maricopa website. And the dual enrollment classes are in your West Met class. So you're not going anywhere else. You're not doing anything extra. You are just doing your West Mech curriculum and class, and the, the curriculum matches the courses that we're offering a dual enrollment offer, matches the, the curriculum at the college, and you have the instructor who is, has the certification or the experience to teach at the community college. So you're not doing anything above and beyond just by attending your West Mech class and earning a C or better. Um, and registering and paying for the, the tuition, you earn the college credit. Um, as far as the will transfer to a four-year university, I will get to that in a moment. And is it the same link for those that are already registered? So I would still go to the GCC dual enrollment website link that I posted. I would still go there, but I would just scroll down to like the register, the step for registration because you'll just log in with the MEID um, and password from, from last year. Okay, all right. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm sorry, oh, ahead, Monica, Anna. can I jump in? Yes, absolutely. I just saw Ms. Guy uh, posted, all students new and returning add classes through their My Maricopa Student Center. For dual enrollment, we're actually not utilizing the Student Center. So we're using something um, it's called dynamic forms. So the students do have to go to our website and go skip down to step four and click login to take them to the dual enrollment registration form online. It's still not through the okay. um, student center. So that varies by college also. Yeah, Rio Salado and Chandler, I believe, are doing it via the student center. Glendale's not quite there yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to use the services at the college, you need some sort of ID, yes. Um, but you can go to Glendale Community College once you're registered for dual enrollment. You can go to GCC and get your ID. So, okay. So I'm going to share again. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those other questions that you guys had. Okay. So, who is eligible for dual enrollment? Any West Mech student that has not graduated high school or earned a GED. Um, if you attend a public high school, a charter high school, 
if you are homeschooled, if you do online, you are eligible for dual enrollment. If you have graduated, unfortunately, or earned a GED, you're considered a graduate and unfortunately not eligible for dual enrollment. Um, Hannah already talked about the Maricopa grant. Uh, we discussed the payment plan. The, the Maricopa grant, Hannah shared two deadlines, the priority deadline and the final deadline. We really encourage students to get the application in by that priority deadline if there's any possible way. Um, I understand it's, you know, in a couple days, so that's difficult, but um, there is limited funds. So once it runs out, it runs out. So try to get those, those applications in as soon as possible. We have the WestMAC dual enrollment grant, which you can get from your campus counselor. Uh, I know that it's on my Google Classroom. I am almost positive it's on Mrs. Guy's as well. So please access that. Somebody asked the question, how do you know, or, or will the credits transfer to a university? So I'm gonna show you right now one of the most amazing tools. It's aztransfer.com. When you get there, you click on Tools, Course Equivalency Guide, and you can do, I'm just gonna do auto, because that's what I know. So it's the auto um, 100, we'll say, because I'm blanking on the course number. Then you go down to what, what college you're taking that class at, so it's Glendale Community College, and you can choose which public Arizona University or all three. Okay, yeah, so Auto 100 is not a class. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I don't know why I can't think of one, but I, I'll, I'll come up with it here in a second. There's one. Thank you. Oh, that's right, it's not auto anymore. <laughs> okay. So ASE 181, Introduction to Engine Performance, is the Glendale class. It is non-transferable to ASU, non-transferable to University of Arizona, and it transfers to NAU as a CTE departmental elective. So as a counselor, I recommend any course you're taking through dual enrollment, you run through AZ transfer just to be sure that it's gonna transfer how you think it is. Um, this is an amazing tool, but it is only for the in-state public universities. So if you are planning on going to a private university in Arizona or out of state, unfortunately you have to um, contact that school and talk to them, find out if it will transfer and how it will transfer. Okay. So, just want to uh, reiterate the deadlines again. The Maricopa grant, the priority deadline that Hannah was talking about, is August 28th. Um, the Westmec grant deadline is August 28th. The final deadline for the Maricopa Grant, September 4th. You must have applied for admission, gotten your MEID, all of that good stuff, regist and registered for classes by September 18th. There really are no exceptions to that. After that, you have about a week to uh, pay the tuition. So September 25th is when you have to pay your tuition by if you don't pay the tuition by the 25th, um, they, you'll be dropped from the courses. So sometimes I tell students if they're not 100% sure that they wanna do it, go through the process. It's a good learning experience anyway, and um, you can either drop the classes or if you don't pay, they'll end up dropping you. So if you have any trouble with applying for admission or registration, 
there are some things that the campus council can help with, but most of the time you really do need to reach out to the college because we do not have access to their system. So um, there is a phone number there, and then I posted the email address that Hannah shared with us um, in the chat box. I can't get my chat box to come up, and I don't understand why. to see if there's any other questions here. Sorry, you guys, just hang tight with me for a second. Maybe if I stop sharing. Yep, okay, so let me just see if we have any questions here. Mr. Shoemaker, you had a good question. Does the dual enrollment credit hours count towards the Ford GM or other factory sponsored program? Hannah, do you know about that? I do not. It looks like, um, oh, was there a response? Yeah, Speranta answered, sorry. The so, Shoemaker, no, did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a good question. If once they complete the registration, will it will those classes show up in their student center? Yeah, they will. It just takes about seven business days before they appear because it takes a little bit of processing time. Okay, so say I procrastinate, which I have been known to do, um, but say I'm a procrastinator and I register on September 18th on the deadline. Chances are they may not even show up and tuition may not even show that it's due until close to the deadline. Am I correct? Well, deadline for registration is the 18th and then the payment deadline's a week later. That's why we do that because we've met a lot of procrastinators. So <laughs> we make sure, <laughs> and us included, so we just make sure there's enough leeway there, enough time given. So students would be fine as long as it's turned in on that deadline date for registration. Perfect, okay. so. I just want to uh, remind everybody that if, once you register for the classes, don't freak out that they're not showing up right away because it can take you know, a good seven days before they show up. Um, a lot of times you parents are on top of things and you, as soon as the, your student registers, you wanna pay the tuition and you kind of freak out because you go online to the student center and they're, it's showing that the classes aren't there and there's no tuition due. So just give it a few days, um, and then you should be able to pay online. You can also pay over the phone. Um, you could mail payment, but you know, I, online is the easiest. Okay, a couple other questions. GCC has an online grant application. Is the Australia Mountain Community College grant application online? I do not know the answer to that question but I can write down the question and get back to you, Monica, so that you can share that. Okay, thank you. And we, we actually have um, a, uh, an information session tomorrow night with the Australia oh, Mountain perfect. Community College. Perfect. But so you're at, but the question I guess is how do they get it in time? How do you mail it to them in time? Yeah, that's, that's going to be a tough one. So we'll have to, um, if you want to message me privately in the chat and give me your um, email address, I would be happy to, to get some more information and, and email that to you. And then what is the difference of the certificate from WestMEC than the one from GCC? So that's a great question. The WestMEC is a high school. So your student is learning the same things as, uh, as they would learn at the college, but the actual certificate of completion that they would earn from GCC has more classes, so it's a little more comprehensive, and it is from a post-secondary institution. So you're, you know, if you earn the certificate from us, that's great, looks awesome on the resume, you've got a lot of knowledge. If you earn the certificate from GCC, you technically have earned a credential from a college. So that's, that's really the difference. Um, Again, if you want to see what classes are offered for 
your student's program, um, go to the GCC dual enrollment website, click on participating high schools, and then scroll down to the campus that your, the Westnet campus that your student attends. And is it a good idea, if you know you're going out of state but don't have a specific college in mind, is it not a good idea to do dual enrollment given you can end up losing time, losing, really you're not losing time because you're doing the classes anyway at Westmet, but as far as money, um, that's really a tough, a tough question to answer. So. Can I jump in on that one? Yeah, please, Hannah. So what I've seen um, with working at colleges and universities is that it's very rare that something doesn't at least transfer as an elective. And a lot of times we snub our nose at electives, not realizing that everybody has to do a certain amount of electives to complete their degrees. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to have something that doesn't transfer as a certain general ed requirement or a certain degree requirement, because even if it's an elective, you may still need those credits. Thank you. Uh huh. So I hope oh, that one more that thing. I have noticed, though, that the ones who usually, typically, not all the time, but typically don't accept dual credit, a lot of times are the private schools or like schools such as Yale, Harvard, those um, Syracuse, those universities typically Very do not cool. accept dual enrollment. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen again because... I want to show the Google Classroom codes for the Campus Counselor Google Classrooms. There is so much information on our Google Classroom. Um, all you have to do is go to classroom.google or classroom.google.com, click join, type in these codes. Please only join the classroom for your student's campus, but we post so much information. There's just so many resources on there. Um, there are, we post announcements in the stream. We also post a lot of resources in the classwork section. So please, please, if you have not joined the Google Classrooms yet, um, please do so because there's so much information there. And I just wanted, before we take last call for questions, I just want to remind you, if you came in late, if you would please make sure to enter your student's first name, last initial, the Westmet campus and program into the chat box. We would really appreciate it, trying to keep track of how many people attend and, and who attends. So if you haven't already done so, please type that in the chat for us. And if you would be so kind as to complete a survey, we would really appreciate that as well. It's a very brief survey. Um, and I will put that link in the chat. Hey, Monica, real quick. Yes. So um, I will have the presentations that are on my Google Classroom right now with how to register for a class. I'll have that updated and posted um, tomorrow. So for those of you that are using that as a resource, I will have that updated tomorrow and share with you so you can update yours as well. Thank you so much. Okay, so I went ahead and, and put that link in for that survey. Um, I'm also going to just trying to make sure I don't miss any questions. When's the deadline for the Westmet grant? So the Westmet grant for um, for the Northeast campus is August 28th. Um, however, there's a little leeway with that because it's you know just through our campus. 
Um, so if you can't get it to me by the 28th, you know, just get it to me um, on Monday or as quickly as possible, please. Uh, Mrs. Guy, is yours the 28th as well? I pretty much run on the same philosophy you do. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, to yeah. get the West Mac grant application, you need to get it from your counselor, your campus counselor. It's on my Google Classroom, if you go to the Northeast campus. At 737, there's one more question. Uh, so you are highly recommending to do the dual enrollment because it's nothing else extra other than the fee. So it's, that's a tough question to answer as well. It really depends on your personal situation. Um, and what your plans are, what your students' plans are for the future. So it's a great opportunity. It's a great way to save time. Um, if your student is planning on, you know, going on to GCC for an associate's degree in auto tech or IT security, then yes, it is highly, highly recommended. Um, if they plan on going to the GM or Ford program, manufacturer program at GCC, then it really isn't going to uh, benefit them for that. So it really just depends on future plans um, and obviously, you know, financial, your current financial situation. Was that the one you were talking about, Carol? No, the next one down. I don't see another one. So are you highly recommending to do oh, dual yeah, enrollment? That's, yeah, that's the one I just answered. Okay. Okay, cool. Just make no, sure. said, I understand that I don't have to do anything extra. Yes, correct. There's nothing else, no, no extra classwork or you don't have to go anywhere else. You just have to, uh, you know, apply for admission, register for the classes, pay the tuition, and then obviously earn a fee or higher in the Westmec class. Oh, great question. May I register for both spring and fall at this time? GCC is allowing us to do year-long registration, which is amazing. We appreciate that so much. So yes, you uh, would register for both fall and spring at this time. Thank you, that's an excellent question, Ms. Lipsy. Do we have when any When does it get paid? When do you pay for the spring? Oh, good question. Do you guys have those dates yet, Hannah? We do not. I am so sorry. We're still, we've just barely figured out fall. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, imagining don't don't have <laughs> I'm, imagining, I'm imagining February sometime. Just More than likely, you know. yes. Typically, it's like the second week of February, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> they, okay, somebody was told February 19th, so that's probably about right. So, um, yes, you can email the grant forms back to the counselor. Will spring be later if you register for both? I'm not sure I understand that question. You're going to register for, for both now. Um, but you will not have to pay the tuition for spring until February. And I understand when you're, when you're not familiar with the dual enrollment process, um, it's a lot of information coming at you at once and you're not, you know, you just want to make sure you're doing everything right and you're doing the best that you can for your child. Um, so I totally understand and that's why, you know, the GCC dual enrollment office is here. That's why the counselors are here. We, we're here to help you, you know, get through all this. So um, if you have additional questions, please make sure to reach out to um, myself or Mrs. Guy if you're at the Northwest campus or to GCC's dual enrollment office. Well, I don't want to, um, you know, take up any more of, of everyone's time. So uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, I just want to Thank you all for being here and thank you for participating. Hannah, thank you so much for your help.
Um, if you guys have additional questions, please make sure to check out the um, Google Classroom counselor pages and or email us. And last question looks like $85 for one semester is $85 per credit hour. So if you're taking um, a three credit class, it's $85 times three plus a $15 uh, registration fee. So it's, I think, $270. $270 for a three credit class. So, all right, well, thank you all so much. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your evening. Oh, last thing, this has been recorded and it will be posted on the Westneck dual enrollment page if you need to rewatch it or um, you know somebody who wasn't able to make it tonight. So, thank you so much. Everyone have a great, great evening.